FlyQ EFB from Seattle Avionics. Let's talk about flight planning for a few minutes. For most flight plans, probably the easiest way to begin is to tap into the search box at the upper left corner of the screen and simply type in the IDENT. Right now we're sitting at the Seattle Avionics headquarters, but let's say that I wanted to plan a flight that's on the East Coast. The particular one goes from Richmond, which is RIC, I already looked it up, to Nashville, which is BNA. And what I want to do, if I just type that, it'll simply draw a straight line between the two points. But I like to fly a Victor Airways, but I don't want to type in all the points along the way or do a lot of rubber banding. So FlyQEFB has a unique way of saying, those are my two points, but I want them routed on Victors. I do that simply by typing the letter V at the end. I could also use a G for GPS Direct, which tells it to avoid terrain, but otherwise create a straight line. If I were flying a jet, I could put a J in. Doesn't really matter. Let's hit the blue search button. It will take it a couple of seconds to create a wind optimized flight plan for us. And there it is. As you can see, I didn't have to type in any of the nav log points. It automatically came with me. A couple of things to point out while we're here. One, if you happen to not be 25 years old anymore, and your eyesight may not be quite the same as it was when you were 25, there's a button that looks like a small letter A and a big letter A. If you tap that, the fonts get much bigger, much easier to see. Next to the font button I hit, there's a wind optimizer button that can show you what the trade-offs are for flying at different altitudes in terms of time and speed. If you tap on any of those altitudes, it will recompute your flight plan using those. If you're flying that route but then you want to reverse it, you can just hit the reverse button and so on. At the top of that area, where it says KRIC, KSME, etc., etc., there are a number of fields that are blue. You can tap on any of those to change them. So I can rename the flight plan by typing on its name. I won't actually do that right now. If I want to change my takeoff time, I can tap on September 11th and change that. Change the pilot, change the plane, and so on. All of it right there. For right now, though, I just want to get a weather briefing for this. So I'm going to hit that second tab next to Navlog that says WX Brief. And here's my Lockheed Martin flight plan brief. This could just as easily have been using CSC duots. doesn't really matter. If I want to file my flight plan, I hit the third tab that says FA plan. I can scroll this a little, review and change any of these points if I want to. When the flight plan is set the way they want it to, I hit the word file and file my flight plan, all like that. Another way to create the flight plan is to use what we call the plans feature, or the plans tab in the product. So let's just go to the third button on the bottom, plans. It automatically defaults to my home airport in the from field. You essentially are going to fill out a form to create the flight plan for you. So if my home airport is BFI, I can begin with there, or I could enter into the field and type something else, or I can hit the recent button and take a look at all the places that I've used recently for a takeoff point. All of that without any typing. So we're going to create the same flight plan. RIC to BNA. If there are particular waypoints along the way that I know I want to fly, I can type those in there. I can choose from VFR, IFR, or DVFR. My routing methods can be Victor Airways, only optimized for wind and add fuel, Jet Airways, or GPS Direct. I'll keep it on Victors again. And this is a great feature, optimized for best winds. Only FlyQ EFB will give you the fastest route possible to get there given the winds that are expected during your flight. So just on that I can create a flight plan or I'm going to hit the more button and see even more features. So if I wanted to change the number on board, if I wanted to change the maximum or the minimum altitude, if I wanted to change the cruising altitude, takeoff fuel, etc. Any of those things can be changed just like that. So there's a lot more flexibility available Although, as I said, most of the time I just use the search box at the top to create the flight plan. And there's another way to create a flight plan as well. All right, so I'm sitting here at the Seattle Avionics headquarters, but I want to create a flight plan once again on the East Coast. So another way to do it, and I want to do it this time without actually typing anything, or at least not typing much, I'm going to go to where I'm going to take off from, which is RIC, hit the search button. On that, you'll see a button that looks like a map. That will bring the map directly to the point uh, that Richmond International Airport is on. I'll tap that. So I'm going to zoom the map out a little bit. Now let's just create the flight plan by double tapping. I'll double tap over the airport, 
and hit the button that says plus FP, which is to say add to flight plan. You don't see anything yet because there's only one point in the flight plan. But say they want to fly to this airport. I can double tap here over at Glasgow Muni, hit add to flight plan. It says, well, where do you want it to be? Do you want to add it to the end or add it somewhere else? Well, there's only one other point, so I'll just add it to the end. So in that way, you have an entire flight plan just by tapping. Of course, you can modify it too. So let's talk about how you modify it. Let's say that I want to add a point, another one, oh, let's say down here. I double tap there. I tell it to add Blairsville to my flight plan. And this time I'm going to tell it where to put it. In particular, we press on the waypoint and it'll go above that waypoint. So I'll tap on KGLW and now it gets inserted right there. Anybody notice a problem with this flight plan, however? The biggest one is that there's some really, really nasty weather in the way. So let's talk about how you modify a flight plan. What you can do is a couple of different things. I can simply take an existing point on the plan and move it. Like instead of going to Glasgow, I wanted to move that to someplace that was clear of the weather. So I'm going to press and hold until I see the circle. At that point, I'm just going to drag this to a place that's a little bit more convenient, maybe avoiding that TFR there, right there. Then the system finds all the places, nav aids, fixes, and airports that are nearby. I can either pick any of those, like I can take the Falmouth Vortac if I want to, or I can fly to K62 Gene Snyder Airport, or if I hit airports, I'm only showing airports in the area. If I hit nav aids, I'm only seeing the nav aids, and if I hit fixes, I see the affixes. I like the common tab though. The common tab mixes the nav aids and the airports and it leaves out the fixes, which are most of the time what you want. So this time I'm just going to fly to Gene Snyder. So we've moved a point, but let's say they want to make one other modification. Instead of just moving an existing point, you can create a new point where there isn't one right now. What do I mean? If I press and hold in the middle of this long line, I can drag this to some other point. It doesn't really matter where. I'll just take this NDB. And at that point, I've created a whole new line segment. Let me show you what I mean, by the way, on this. I'm going to flip very briefly to the nav log. So let's just go to the plans and the nav log. So look at my current plan. And there it is. Incidentally, FlyQEFB has a great split screen feature. and I'm going to use that right now. In the upper left corner of the screen, I'm going to split it. So now I can see the nav log and the map all at the same time. Move it around, do whatever I want to do. If I want to remove one of these points in terms of flight plan editing, also easy. Let's say I didn't really want to fly to this NDB. I can press and hold on the map. And notice in the upper right corner of this, it has a delete button. So I'm just going to hit delete. And poof, it goes away. Something else I should point out. Let's say that you were actually on a flight plan and we want it to go direct to some other airport that is not on our flight plan. Like I will once again tap on this airport towards the center of the screen. Instead of hit, hitting the plus FP button, if I hit the direct to button, then the entire rest of the flight plan will be cleared and you will go direct from your current position to that airport. In this case, uh, KLNP Lonesome Pine. A little quick point here. On my existing flight plan, I have three airports. I went direct to K62. In that case, it won't clear the entire flight plan because it knows that where I'm telling it to go direct to is already on my flight plan. What it will do is it will clear all the flight plan points before K62 and bring us directly from our current position to K62 and then continue on with the rest of the flight plan from there. Let's do one other thing in terms of editing the flight plan. Often when you plan a flight, you want to add fuel in the middle of it. When you rubber band the flight to an airport, it doesn't assume that it's a fuel stop. So let's make it one. On the nav log, I'm going to hit the green button that says edit. This also lets you with a green plus button. It also lets you add things and delete things and stuff like that. I usually find that easier to do from the map, however, but you can do it this way as well. What I do want to do, however, is to turn K62 into a fuel stop. So I'm going to tap anywhere in that cell. It doesn't really matter where. Right now, you notice that the type is set to waypoint. That means fly over it. And the fuel added is zero. Well, if I want to add some fuel, I'll say yes. I tapped into the fuel added area, so I would like to make it a fuel stop. And I'm going to add in, say, 25 gallons of fuel. Click done, and there you go. Now it's a fuel stop. When I hit the done button, it saves it, and you're good to go. FlyQ EFB from Seattle Avionics.